Hey guys, in this video, I'm checking out my first ever review of a Samyang lens. This is the Samyang 85mm f1.4, which is a manual, I would say, portrait only, outdoor portrait only lens for the Sony E mount. Let's see how it comes packaged. This is the box that the lens comes in Samyang f1.4 85mm standard angle lens. You can see a picture of it on the front. Uh, just more info on the side, another picture on the back. This one lists out each and every mount that this lens is available for, so starting from Canon, Nikon, Pentax, Sony. Does not say that this is for the Sony E-mount on the box anywhere, so let's hope that it is. So very similar to um, Rokinon packaging. The standard kind of Rokinon pouch that you're used to seeing, which is nice, it's nice and soft. Instruction manual here, and the lens itself. Lens hood, let me take this off. Just a uh, coated plastic. And you can see that the lens itself doesn't look like the picture. It looks like there's like an extension here for the actual Sony E-mount. And it does say for Sony on the back. Lens cap is branded Samyang. Really cool front lens element around the back. Standard E-mount, obviously no electronic connections because this is a manual focus lens, manual aperture. You can see the aperture blades down in there and you can probably see them from the front. Let's see if I can open them out, yeah. So there are distinct clicks. Let's take a look at the aperture here. F1.4 all the way to F22. And I do like the clicks. Focus ring. Okay. It's not the smoothest, but I do like the amount of resistance on the focus ring. I've noticed with Rokinon lenses in general, sometimes they have really, really light focus rings, and people complain about that. This one is nicely damped. Um, you can see that it does a little bit less than a full 180 rotation, and there are markings here for feet and meters, so you can go from infinity all the way up to a meter. So that is that. Brand marking here, Samyang, made in Korea. 72 millimeter filter thread. The lens feels very solid. It is definitely front heavy. You can feel that the glass, especially this front element, is quite substantial. It's very light back here, not much weight. So it's probably gonna make the camera a little bit front heavy. But let's put it on the camera and see how it looks. And here is the lens mounted on my A6000. You can see that it is quite large. It is significantly larger than the Sony 85 millimeter lens, which is noticeably shorter than this. Front of the lens looks great. That piece of glass in the front is awesome. This lens does make the camera a lot more front heavy. I just weighed the lens itself and it comes in at 524 grams. So it is a hefty lens for something as small as the A6000 but it is still usable. I did notice that the coating on this lens is more reminiscent of that on the A6500 or A6300. So you kind of have smooth coating here on the A6000, which doesn't quite match the, uh, the texturized coating on the lens, but uh, most people are not gonna pay attention to that. So. so let's take a look at some sample photos using the Samyang 85mm and my Sony A6500. Here we go.
So first and foremost, I'm gonna talk about the build quality. The focus ring is super duper well damped. I think that it has about a perfect level of rotation to where you can still get your subject in focus um, and you're not spinning and spinning and spinning trying to get there. As far as using this lens out in the real world, it is very difficult to nail down focus because you have a very narrow depth of field. As you would expect, 85 millimeters on an APS-C sensor is equivalent to about 127 millimeters on a full frame camera. So you can imagine um, with f1.4 as the fastest aperture, you get paper thin focus. So you can focus on one eye and completely miss focus on the other eye if you're not careful. So when I was using this on my a6500, I did zoom into focus as well as use focus peaking. And that seemed to work decently well. However, there were a number of shots where I completely missed focus or it was just off by maybe an inch or two in that depth of field. So if you are counting on this lens to capture specific moments, like if you're doing wedding photography, it's going to be a little bit tough to nail and capture each and every moment. So be sure that you are very confident in your manual focusing skills if you use this lens professionally. Now, as far as performance is concerned, what I noticed almost immediately using this lens is that wide open at f1.4, there is a whole ton of chromatic aberration. With this lens, it is noticeable through the viewfinder as well as the screen on the back of the camera. Now, once you stop it down to about f2, it gets a little bit better, and then f2.8 and f4, it gets significantly better. Now, another reason you might want to stop this lens down is wide open at f1.4, it's not exactly tack sharp. Now, I'm not gonna say that it's soft, but it's not as sharp as it is at f2 and f2.8 and f4. Wide open at f1.4, the background bouquet is extra buttery, creamy, smooth, and because you have a narrow field of view, subject separation is very nice. I used to think that on a crop sensor camera, 50 millimeter was an ideal portrait lens, but really over the last couple of months, I've kind of been more and more drawn to the 85 millimeter focal length for specifically outdoor portraits on the APS-C sensor cameras. So what is my conclusion about this lens? Well, I have to say that it is an excellent lens and when you consider the price, it's about $250, $260, it is a bargain for something that's f1.4 that does excellent portrait photography. I know that they may not be the sharpest images in the world wide open, but they are still very usable and they look great straight out of the camera. I think for me personally, the takeaway from using this lens is more of an appreciation for the Sony 85 millimeter f1.8. Now the reason that I say that is not only is the Sony 85 millimeter f1.8 a little bit sharper, even wide open at f1.8 versus f2 on this lens, but the key difference is that autofocus. The Sony 85 millimeter lens is just so quick, so much easier to use. You are not sitting there zooming in, trying to make sure that your eyes are in focus. You literally just point the lens at your subject, snap, and every single shot that you take, 90 to 95% of the shots that you take, I should say, are tack sharp and correctly focused. And that Sony 85 lens, Yes, it's more expensive, but I'd say that especially if you're using that for professional use, um, if you're getting paid to take portraits, get the Sony 85, skip this. Also, I mentioned before, the Sony 85 is noticeably smaller and lighter than this lens, so if you're traveling with it or packing it with you, it is less of a burden, so there's that as well. In summary, if you have the extra money, spring for the Sony 85 millimeter. If you are on a tighter budget and you really need an 85 millimeter lens, this one is great. I think Rokinon and Samyang really make some of the best manual lenses for the Sony E-mount. So definitely check this thing out. If you guys are interested, I'll post a link to Amazon down below. I'll also post a link to the Sony 85 so that you guys can compare those two and then make your decision. As always, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all of your likes, comments, and support. Stay tuned for more. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.